Hi there, I'm Janet Lynn. And I'm Will Zeilinger. We are coming to you from Long Beach, California. We are a married couple who write together and separately. Between us, we have 15 books, and yes, we are still married. We also write under E.J. Williams for our new series, International Mysteries. Our first book, Stone Pub, will be released in 2021. As published authors, we have spoken at several venues, such as BoucherCon, Left Coast Crime, L.A. Lit Crawl, West Hollywood Book Fair, Santa Monica Public Library, American Association of University Women, Glendale Public Library. We've met so many authors over the years, and with the advent of Zoom, we thought we'd chat with authors that we know and love. Marilyn Levinson writes mysteries, romantic suspense, and novels for kids. Writing as Allison Brooke, she pens the Haunted Library series. Death Overdue was nominated for the Agatha Award for Best Contemporary Novel in 2018. The fifth novel in the series, Death on the Shelf, will be available in November of 2021. Other mysteries include the Golden Age of Mystery Book Club series and the Twin Lakes series. She has received acclaim for her 19 books. Marilyn lives on Long Island, New York, where many of her books take place. Hello, Marilyn. Nice. Hi, Marilyn. Nice to see you. It's so nice to see you both and chatting with you. Well, it's interesting. We're talking to New York and we have a great view and great visual. That's wonderful. Your hometown. Yeah, my hometown. <laughs> my hometown. Where are you, where are you from? Where? I'm from Oyster Bay. Oh, well, I, I used to live in Jericho for 30 years. I know years. where that is. That's, That's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Not did you me. did you always <laughs> want to be a writer, Marilyn? When I was a little girl, I wanted to be a writer. I still have my short stories in cursive we used to learn cursive remember mm -hmm. and that or a ballerina and you see which one out <laughs> <laughs> and be a writer for a very long time so i i think i picked the better one mm. so as far as inspiration what inspires you to write cozy mysteries i like to read them i think cozy mysteries set a cozy scene you have this cozy feeling and everything takes place in a small town and people know each other. They don't always love each other, but they know <laughs> each other. And there's a sense of camaraderie and friendship. And, um, and, and I love writing a series because um, my characters go on and on. And um, it's fun to think of new ways of, um, you know, having your characters explore different areas and do different things and grow and change. So I think that's why I like cozies and the murder is off, you know, is off scene. So we don't see any blood and gore, but um, I love dealing with the characters and their relationships. I suppose that's what it is. Are any of the, any of your settings, places where you live or nearby or? Well, in my other series, um, I do use Long Island um, in, in the, um, golden age of mystery book club mysteries and in the twin lakes mystery i did use long island um i always make up a town and then but it's surrounded by real towns and in this series the uh, haunted library series the one i'm writing is Ag as um Agatha, as as um allison brooke i it takes place in connecticut um i have a fondness for connecticut because we my family had a summer home there Mm -hmm. And um, I really based it on a town that my husband and I drove through. Uh, we spent an evening there. And I just love the idea of the green and the old buildings being built around the green. Of course, the green ones was much larger. and Cows used to go there and live there. But, um, well, they used to, you know, they, they used to feast there on their grass. And, of course, it's much smaller now. 
But I like the idea of a town mixed with old and new. And also it's near the water. There's, there are mountains in the background. And I just thought it was a, a good setting for a cozy mystery because one of the aspects of cozy mysteries is you want a picturesque town mm -hmm. and um, you know that people can like and admire. And of course the focal point of my series is the library which is an old building, a few, a few uh, centuries old. And in the book I'm writing now, uh, the library has acquired the building next door, which is really attached to it. And a lot of interesting things happen mm -hmm. while they're building and be, I should say renovating the building. You know, going back to series, I enjoy writing series also, because you can really get involved with the characters and after a while, you know, they just become part of you. I know when we were writing our series together and the other two series there, my characters would sit in the back seat and argue with each other as I'm driving down the street. So they do with you all the time. And it's kind of nice to have these friends with you in your head. I, I agree. And I love the way my main character has changed. Um, she, you know, she came on the scene. She, she really came from a dysfunctional family and she, she was ready to take off. And then she's offered this job and, and, um, you know, initially she's, her hair is bleached purple and she's wearing long <laughs> earrings and, uh, and Doc Martin boots. And of course she doesn't dress like that when she becomes the head of, um, of, of whatever she is, which is the of events, programs and events. And mm -hmm. she has to have a more official appearance. And um, you get to see how she changes and how she learns to trust and to have relationships. And that's, I love to write about relationships and secrets is another one of my favorites, <laughs> writing about secrets. Isn't it fun? That is fun. Now, what do you do when you're not writing? Well, <laughs> writing, as you know, I don't know how much time, actual time I write on my manuscript today, but I am at the computer. And as I told you, I, I have a group of friends. We're all writing pretty much the same kind of books and we email back and forth a lot during the day. And um, I, I don't know, you're always doing business, business in the sense of setting up some sort of promotional thing or something or, mm -hmm. or something comes that you're involved in and then you have to announce it to the world. And I don't know, it just seems to take up the day but when I'm not doing that, I read and I listen to a lot of books now in addition to reading and I knit and I, I love to chat with my granddaughter on FaceTime mm -hmm. and because she doesn't live near me and my, my grandson not so much because he doesn't like to talk that much on FaceTime. And um, I do Sudoku and crossword puzzles and I do love to eat out, which I hope to get back to very soon. You know, I've eaten out a few times recently, but not as much as I used to. Well, I can see why you find so many uh, little small towns that whether you make them up or not in the area. I'm not from the East Coast, but Janice taken me back there a couple of times. And it's just so, I think it's just so amazing. You can drive 10 minutes and just be in the middle of nowhere. You know, out here in Los Angeles, you've got to drive like two or three hours mm -hmm. and you're still not really in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, you mean that one small town follows the other? Yeah. Right. But in between, you've got like forests and woods and things like that, and lakes. Not so much here. Yeah, except, <laughs> yeah. except the beach. And that's only on one side of the, uh, the, the state. Yeah, it sure is. But along the whole, well, we have beaches too. I, I always feel strange when I'm not in a state that has that has a beach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because and Long Island, of course, we I'm not right on the beach, but either way, I'll, I'm close to water. I go 10, 15 minutes either either way, and there's water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the the kids' books that you've written? Oh, okay. Um, the first book I wrote is called "And Don't Bring Jeremy," um, and it's about. Two, two, two brothers and the older one has um, neurological impairment, learning disabilities. And it's loosely based on my son. Um, my oldest son has problems. Um, I, you know, I mean, he's, fu he's fine now. He, you know, he leads a, a life. It's perhaps not as, as um, well, how should I? It's, I'm, it's a rich life, but maybe it would have been a little different. But um, that was my first book. Um, 
and it's about they, the, the boys are in sixth and seventh grade and how, um, you know, they learn to um, relate to one another better, the, the younger boys, mm -hmm. especially. And that, that was, uh, um, uh, that was uh, six, had six state nominees, nominations, which is something that um, children's books have. And, um, and then I, I, I mean, then I've, I've written other children's books um, it's the most recent one is, I guess, Rufus, I wrote that a long time ago, but Ru Rufus uh, and Magic Run Amok. And um, <laughs> it's a fun book. I wrote it before Harry Potter, Potter, but it is about a boy who finds out he's a, wood, a witch, only in New York, only in America, I should say, not, not in New York necessarily. And um, he's not very happy about this. He just, I should say, he doesn't want to tell his mother, his aunt and his grandmother, because they're all witches and they're good witches. You're supposed to do good. You have to take lessons. You have to help the world and people. And so he doesn't tell them and the magic grows stronger and stronger and it runs them up and that's <laughs> what happens. And it's how he deals with the bully in school, someone who's been chasing him home for years. And it's how their relationship evolves and that was a children's choice. I was very proud of that. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. And it's fun writing children's books, you know. And I'm, I finished a second book in that series and I've started a third. And when I have time, I'll get back to them. Well, other than the age difference, what's the difference between setting up a, book, a, a story for children and setting up a story for an adult? Hmm. Well, um, I guess it's not as complicated. You're, you're in the head of the child. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the time I'm a boy. So it's, you know, it's because I had sons, I guess I, most of my books were like that. Um, you just get in the head of the child. It, and so you're a child. And I guess you call on the child in you. Mm -hmm. um, I hope when we're more mature, we take on, we get in the head of a, of a mystery person, a sleuth or whatever. And I suppose adult books are more complicated. I, 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 I always wrote novels, so it's hard to say. And I never really dumbed down my language or anything. So it just worked naturally. I, I don't know really, that's a good question. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's not as complex, I suppose. Well, it sounds like you enjoy uh, storytelling. Yeah. You have those stories inside you, you want to share with both the young and the old. So what is the most challenging thing you've found about writing for both different age groups and, and writing what you do write? Well, I don't, I don't find, you know, I don't find it a problem really. So I, that's the challenge for me is to sit down every day and really, Put, get the words down, believe it or not. I know it sounds weird because I've written so many books, but every day, even, it's just hard for me to settle down. And that's why I end up writing really in the, towards the end of the day. So do so, you write on a schedule? Well, I, I pretty much, I write towards the end of the day. It's, it's probably, this is how it, it ends up being. So I suppose you could call it that, but every time I finish a book, I'm kind of surprised that it got done. So. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's been on time. So somehow something in me knows you better do it. You better, you better get those words down, you know? Well, and, we, we write uh, between six and eight every morning, every day, every day. Before the world wakes up. Yeah, before our life starts. <laughs> and that's how we've been managing to write so many books so quickly is because we don't let anything get in, you know, other than a high fever and, and nausea. But <laughs> the important thing is that you sit down and you write. Someone once told me that uh, you got to, you know, butt and chair equals book, you know, <laughs> and that's uh, how, that's how we focus on that. Now, are you a panster or are you an outliner? Well, um, I usually, this is the first book that I I, I did not really have an outline except for the beginning. And um, it's, it is an issue because in almost all my books, I have two storylines and they have to come together because they really are joined. So they better come together. And, um, I, and for most of my books, 
um, I would write an outline and, you know, of course, change it as it went. But I found with writing these books that the more, the more, the more I wrote, the, the more of a pantser I became. Mm-hmm. Because you have to be, otherwise it's boring. You're just writing, right? You're recording, oh, well, yes, this is what happens. And I think you have to leave yourself open for mystery and, and what something new that's going to happen. And in this book, um, I wasn't sure how, how I was going to end the book because, you know, I, we may be very, um, I think we're very, as a group, very kind to each other. You know, we're very supportive. But we're also very, you're really challenged by your last book. And what happened, um, my new book is came out. Well, it's not out yet, but I've been getting a lot of reviews and thank God they're good. And somebody who write, reviews a lot of books and happens to love my books, um, he wrote me a very nice review and he's an author as well. And when I thanked him and I told him I'd like to, you know, I'm, I'd like to do it again, another guest visit on his blog and he said you know Marilyn I I think this is the best one yet well <laughs> that means you know what that means it's yeah. really nice to hear but that means you better your next one the one you're writing <laughs> right now yeah. right mm-hmm. I mean yeah you, you, you better it. you better yeah so <laughs> it's not even other people because we all have our readers it's that we have to write we have ourselves to compete with, it's, I hate to say that, but that expression, you're only as good as your last book. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it, it keeps you sharp. It keeps you, you know, because um, I just, I think, you know, you want to please your readers. And, you know, with Facebook, we have such a wonderful opportunity to really um, connect with our readers. And I, I love doing author takeovers because I am lucky enough, I can, I can write I, something down very, very quickly. I wish I did this when I was writing my novel, but you know, I could respond to people very quickly. And it's such a wonderful feeling it, it, it's to hear, I love your series. When is the next one coming out? And, or somebody will say, oh, I never heard of her. And, so, and somebody will say, oh yeah, it's a great series. And it's such a, it's such a supportive, wonderful things. And I think that's what gets us to keep going. I really do. Mm-hmm. You know, we, you have quite a few books that you've written one after the other, and we do the same thing. We get them out pretty quick. And my biggest concern was that we we're going to plagiarize ourselves <laughs> with the plot <laughs> lines and characters. And it happened. We, well, we did it. We, uh, one character was, we plagiarized our own character to well, another series. Just took a, the, the name from a Totally unrelated book that was done what five or six years mm-hmm. earlier, and yeah. we didn't know until our fan told us. So, <laughs> fans told you, you so, know that, yeah. I, I, that, well, that happened. The, I mean, like, for example, I was coming to the. I'm about to write the end. Well, thank God, I have this little group. You know, we and I mean, we talk about everything, and we've been through so many things in our lives because we, we've been together about twenty years, and but there, uh, I'm thinking of my next book and I threw out an idea, you know, I, I wanted to know how to connect it in a certain way. And then also in terms of the, how to end this book, because like you say, you don't want to repeat yourself. And so, or, you know, so even, you may not even take somebody's idea, but it sets off an idea in your head. And sometimes Mm -hmm. even as I'm writing to them, the idea comes to me. But, and this, I, I'm sure you both also, it, someone should hear your conversation. Hmm, we can't have him hit over the head again because yeah. he did that, right? <laughs> Because, oh no, we poisoned the other person three books back. Exactly. Let's see. Yeah. So what, what didn't we run do? down my car, <laughs> right? <laughs> it, it, you know, you have to be inventive. And yeah, and it's rather challenging to find different ways to kill someone. I mean, it's not that easy, you know, not like I people know. think. Yeah. So I, this, is, this is a writer's group or just a group of friends that you belong to? It's, well, we're not, it's not an official writer's group. We're just together, you know, but we all write the same sort of books. Oh, but so. we all write in, I mean, everyone's lately been writing a thriller, but I haven't, I haven't been writing any thriller. It's like the latest thing. Everyone's been 
in addition to, to writing cozies, they're writing thrillers. So I'm reading them, but I, I don't want to write them. Did you, uh, did you have a, a copy of one of your books you can show us? Oh, yes. This, this is my, my latest book. Um, it's called Checked Out for Murder. That's from mm -hmm. the library series, correct? Yeah, this is the fourth in the library series. And um, my, the, the next one coming out is um, Death on the Shelf, which is coming out in November. And then the following set, uh, uh, set September, I said loosely, so it's not definite, is um, Dewey Decimated. So, <laughs> I yeah. love your titles. Yeah, I like your titles. Yeah, well, okay, that's, I don't always pick my titles. And when I, they ask me for suggestions, I go to my group and they all, the last few, they, they supplied the titles. And I, I must admit, I get them mixed up in my head. In fact, I was looking up Death on the Shelf and I was looking up something else that sounded similar. I said, that's not your book, you know, and I, <laughs> I you know, the title, because lately there have been a lot of library books out, you know, connected mm -hmm. to libraries. And when I was doing it, I said, oh, nobody's done a library. Well, she's a librarian, but she's really in charge of programs and events. So it's not like she's really involved with books, so, so to speak, you know, so. Um, so what advice do you have for someone who's just starting out who wants to write but is, hasn't done their first book? What advice would you give them? Well, I would, I would think, I think I would say a few things. Um, I think I would advise her to join, or him, even though it's a him, Sisters in Crime and the Guppies, because the Guppies is a wonderful group um, it's really for beginners, people are beginning, but then people never leave. So, it's, <laughs> every, you know, it's, um, it's a bunch of writers and the more experienced writers help, you know, the, those who are starting out. So I would join the guppies and I would um, write, definitely read a few books about whatever genre you're writing and get into a good critique group. Um, I don't have a critique group, but I would imagine it, I mean, I have in the past, but never for very long, but you want people who are supportive, but honest mm -hmm. and, um, and have your best interest. You know, they're not trying to be snarky about things. Mm -hmm. If they say something that's not, that, you know, it's to help you. If they say something a little, not that complimentary, it's they, they, their motive is to help you, not for some other reason. That's very important. We've been in several critique groups and it's amazing how different they are from, uh, from group to group. Some are good, some are just not quite conducive yeah, some, to some people are, wanting some to write. Some are helpful, some yeah. are helpful, yeah. But we found that a lot. So along with your library books, what's next for Marilyn Levinson? Well, I, I Probably will write a a, um, a seventh when I'm fin when I'm finished with that, and um, I want to finish. I'm I'm waiting to hear if the second Rufus book is going to be coming out, and I I'm I had started the third. I wanted to finish it. I see it as a trilogy, and um, I if I have time, I'd like to get back to short stories. I, I think I forgot how to write a short story. I haven't written one in years. And um, I don't know, I I mean, I've written short stories, but not necessarily mysteries. So um, I thought it would be interesting, mm -hmm. something to do, but I, I'm unable to write more than one book at a time. So I, you know, I have to take it one at a time at this point in my life. You know, I've always wanted to write short stories, but I find it very difficult. I can't write short. I have to write long. But I've only sold two short stories. And it's just, it's just, to me, it's really hard not to be able to spend time with your, with the plot and time with your character. Yeah. I, I and I, my short stories that I've written aren't short. So <laughs> something, you know, I, I guess, I guess I'm like you and, and, um, so it's, it's, I think though, it's like writing adult books and children's books. 
if you're writing a children's, a, a short story, your mind works one way. If, it, mm -hmm. if you're writing a, a, your novel, I, I think if you did start shorts, that's just what I think. But, um, you know, we can compartmentalize a bit when it comes to writing. I, I had a question that, because this came up in the, in the I, I don't know if we have time for that, but we, my group, we were discussing um, devel developmental um, editors and we were just puzzled by some people because some established authors use them and we were wondering, you know, just why or what it would be the purpose of it. Developmental editors. I think sometimes, you know, you get so wrapped up in your books over the years. Uh, sometimes it's good to have some fresh eyes just to look at you, look at it, kind of like uh, look at the basics to make sure you're still on track. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't think they're going to rewrite your story for you, but. No, I think what you, are you talking, what we, what I've heard of is content, continent editors, content. Co content editors, where they go through the, it's not just the fixing the grammar and punctuation. No, this has nothing to do with grammar, but yeah. I think. It's, I got. The, I, I wasn't sure exactly what it was, and that's what. Yeah, what, what they do. Writing. What they do is they go through and look how con the continuity of your story. Like a story editor. They be sure yeah. everybody. But isn't that what something your editor does? That's what my. I mean, my editor will tell me if there's a problem. You know, that's well, what. It, like for instance, they'll look and say, "But you at the beginning, the guy's got green eyes, and now he's got brown eyes. <laughs> this doesn't make sense." No, <laughs> yeah, that's and the copy editor does that. You know, sometimes. Sometimes. At, but it's, at, but it's like, I know, like Monday should follow Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday yeah. follow Sunday. My last book, I wasn't careful of. You know, oh God, it took so long. <laughs> I had to go through the whole book to check, make sure the days all matched up. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it might it might just be a new title for a uh, for a book or content or story editor. This new developmental editor. For instance, I was in the uh, graphic design field for the longest time. Years ago, they used to call us commercial artists. Then they call us graphic designers. Now they're visual communicators. So it might just be a new fancy title for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, got it. Okay, Marilyn, I'm going to ask you a question that I ask all my authors. Do you yeah. eat when you write? <laughs> Is it lunchtime? No, no close. <laughs> what? Do you well, eat when you write? No, I don't. I don't. You know? What no. about you drink? Like coffee? I, I drink water. I, you know, I, I'll bring, let's say, maybe a cup of coffee up and then, or tea, and I see, oh, I didn't drink it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I, I will drink water sometimes. That what? What about music? Do you use music, listen to music when you write? Oh, no. 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 I think that would distract me. Yeah. That's a, he needs total silence. I need noise in my head and food in my mouth <laughs> to write. I got to have all work my in senses. separate rooms then. Oh, we're in the same no, room. Same room. Headphones. Headphones. Oh, headphones. <laughs> it. Saves yeah. our marriage. <laughs> yeah. That's quite amazing, though, that you can work together. That's really oh. Absolutely. It's funny. Some days we'll be writing along. She'll be at her computer because we're about six or eight feet apart. And uh, we'll stop and look up and say, you know, if someone didn't know us, they'd think we didn't like each other. We're really <laughs> mad at each other because we're not talking. We're busy writing. You know, we kind of ignore the life. <laughs> well, Marilyn, it's been wonderful having you on our show. And it's wonderful having to meet you for the first time. And I want to thank you for being on the show and all your wisdom and writing children's stories as well as posies. Mm. Thank you for coming. We appreciate yes, that. Thank you. And we'll have your website up at the end of the, of the podcast. Oh, great. And thanks so much for having me. I, I truly enjoyed chatting with both of you. It was so much fun. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Marilyn. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Mwah. Thank you for watching. We will see you next time on Chatting with Authors. Be sure to push the subscribe button at the bottom of the screen. Stay safe, everybody. Mm -hmm.